Is there another free agent we're not mentioning? I know Carlos Correa is most likely going to be a free agent. I think he opted out of his deal uh, with the Twins. But are we not mentioning a certain free agent that could be could get a huge deal in the uh, in the off season? Jacob Degrom. He technically has a player option, but he's going to opt out. He's going to go on the free agency market. And that's going to be a huge loss for the Mets. Now, he didn't pitch as many games this year as you would have hoped. He's dealt with some injuries over the last couple of years, but he's still, hands down, probably the most coveted pitcher out there right now. If you were to start your team in, outside of Otani, who who is an absolute unicorn, if you had to pick one pitcher to start your team around, I would probably say DeGrom is going to be that guy right now. Uh, and I think he goes to Atlanta. That would be my guess at this point. Unless Stephen Cohen doesn't sign Judge and backs up the Brinks truck for Degrom, but Scherzer's there, and I don't know if Degrom wants to be a second fiddle. Yeah, and I think too maybe that I don't know if the Mets are thinking about this, but the injury bug has hit Degrom the last few years, and I mm-hmm. feel like the Mets might be a little cautious of bringing him back. But the thing is, does Degrom want to go back to the Mets? I know the Mets said we're a lot better last year, but in the past it seemed like Degrom was basically their only thing. Now they had some other good players like Pete Alonso, and then they brought in Lindor, but. It seemed like mm-hmm. a, for the long time it was just basically Degrom and that was it, and I kind of want to know. I, I kind of think too that he's eventually going to leave that Big Apple because he would have he would have opted in. He would opt in if he was right. going to stay, and I don't I don't think he's going to do that. Um, Carlos Correa, as I mentioned, I kind of want to talk a little bit of more, more about mm-hmm. him. Do you think he returns to the Twins? They were not good last year. Do you think he goes back, or what do you think the future holds for uh, Correa? Ah, uh, it's it's hard to guess. I. Th- there's going to be a very competitive shortstop market for sure. You're going to have Trey Turner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xander Bogarts is also a free agent coming out of Austin. And I do agree. I do think Correa will hit the market. I know the Cubs are going to be hard after one of them. There's a lot of talk that uh, Trey Turner or Bogarts, but Correa was supposedly one of the Cubs' top free agents uh, that they targeted this past offseason. So I could see a fit there. Um, the twins will probably be in on one of the other three, uh, whether it's not Correa or I think Trey Turner is probably the best of the bunch in my mind when it comes to a spark, um, top of the order, he can hit for power. He can steal. He can play multiple positions too. He played center field and the outfield for multiple teams, uh, played with their, uh, when he was in uh, Washington, I think he played some time with the Dodgers out in the outfield. As far as Correa, He didn't have the best year either, Um, so I think that that's going to suppress what he could have made had he really come out and played very well. But he is the one shortstop that is not going to be weighed down by a qualifying offer um, because Bogarts is going to get it from the Red Sox and Turner is going to get it from the Dodgers. Correa just had that from the Astros last year. So whoever signs him can theoretically spend more money because they're not going to lose the draft pick for signing him. Where that's going to be, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I think it would be hard for him to stay in the Twins with the Twins. Uh, Twins generally don't sign the biggest free agents. Mm -hmm. Uh, And when you look at it, I love Minnesota and Minneapolis, but how many players are really saying, I want to go live in Minnesota for for six years? Yeah, Yeah, it's it's not a huge... A huge market. It's not Los Angeles or New York or even Miami or you know right. even Texas, right? It's not really that market that most people want to go to. And of course, you know Minnesota not having a lot of not having a great season doesn't help either. Right. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Um, another some other free agents too. And we like I said we mentioned Arenado, we mentioned Carlos Correa, we and you've you've mentioned a little bit of Trey Turner. And actually, actually, let's just stop there. Trey Turner. Do you think he leaves the Dodgers or do you think um, – where do you think he ends up uh, in 2023? Uh, do I think he'll leave the Dodgers? It'll be hard to leave the Dodgers just because of the studs that they have. But at a certain point, the Dodgers – I mean, they're not going to run out of money, but there mm-hmm. is a luxury tax in baseball. Um, and you start to get penalized the more you're over. And I, I know a lot of teams like the reset. <sighs> The Phillies would be a pretty decent spot for Trey Turner, to be honest, um, because I think shortstop, I know they've got Stott there, but that would be a spot. The Cardinals, the Cubs, uh, I would think it's between the Dodgers and the Cubs, in my mind. That would be the two teams, I think, that really go after him. 
the Red Sox are a, a team that are probably going to try to sign Bogarts, but they could also be a Correa landing too. It could be one of those carousels. Those three, it's going to be the first one to drop is going to be a waterfall or a domino effect for the other shortstops. Because another one is Dansby Swanson. You can throw in there as well. I believe he's a free agent. And with the amount of money the Braves have spent on every other player on their team, I don't think Dansby's going to res- uh, re-sign there. So he's probably going to hit the free agency market too. Yeah, it's just like a huge uh, musical chair, right? And someone could be left without a seat, which is most unlikely, but that could happen to right. where you see, you know, someone just missed the chair because they wait a little too long or um, just other teams get interested in other players and stuff like that. Uh, what's another dark horse team that now no one's talking about that could spend a lot of money next season and could possibly make the playoffs that didn't make the playoffs from last year? Um, spent a lot of money. The Giants, I think, will spend a lot of money. Um, they were in the playoffs last year. They had a down year this year. Uh, they still were okay. I mean, they played 500 ball for much of the year. Mm-hmm. They've got they've got a team that is a little bit younger. They're not as experienced as the teams that they had 10 years ago that won three World Series in mm-hmm. a five-year span. But that's a, that's a landing spot for Judge. That's a team that could spend – Theoretically, three hundred fifty to four hundred million dollars on that one player alone. Um, otherwise, I do think that the NL East is probably going to be really trying to spend money. The Braves and the Mets—they don't like how they're having to watch the Phillies. Um, I think a team that may want to spend some money—I don't think that they'll spend a ton—but maybe the Orioles. That was a team that just missed out. They could supplement their team. They're not a big market team. So they're not going to be outspending uh, multiple teams, but between them, uh, the Mariners, I think could use an upgrade in some spots here, there, maybe a couple more arms for their rotation. As far, I think it's really going to just be the normal teams that are, are trying to spend and spend and spend some more. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I wouldn't be surprised if the Mets and Dodgers continue to spend money just like they do every year. Um, and it's, it seems like to a lot of it, just the t- rich get richer, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that seems to be a huge, uh, or usually what happens every, po- every off season. And then of course yep. the Orioles too. I always forgot. I, I always forget about them. I know they've been terrible for a long time, but a this long year, time. Yeah. But this year they finally got good. They almost made the playoffs. Um, yeah, definitely keep an eye on Orioles. I don't, I completely forgot about them. So that would be interesting. I think a lot of people outside of people in the AL East or AL East fans would like them to, to succeed. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see what happens um, next season.